Hey, what's up? It's your boy, Coach K for the PT Hustle. And in this video, we're going to be going over a question about gait interventions, one of my favorite topics to teach. If you're a PT student or a new grad and you're taking your NPTE and you would like to have more questions just like this, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to the channel. Let's go ahead and knock this one out. It says, Estefania is treating a patient with a transfemoral amputation who presents with excessive right hip flexion during routine gait analysis. Pretty straightforward first sentence. One thing I have as a piece of advice to you for the MPTE is make sure you know about amputees and transformal amputation. This could easily show up on the MPTE, and there's some really not tricky questions, but there can be some difficult ones that you need to know how to solve through. Now, this one says that we have a patient with a transfemoral amputation, excessive right hip flexion, all right? So these are things to keep in mind. Now it says upon examination, the patient has four out of five gross manual muscle testing and decreased right hip extension range of motion. Let's go ahead and stop there. A lot of great information. So we know that the patient coming in has excessive right hip flexion. All right. The second part of this says they have four out of five gross manual muscle testing. So to me, that's letting me know that the person has good muscle strength around the hip, all right? So I have to keep that in mind. That's what a four out of five means, okay? Let's continue forward. It says, and decreased right hip extension range of motion. We need to process and critically think through this before moving forward. Remember, the question did say four out of five gross manual muscle testing. That means the hip muscles grossly have good strength. So if the person had decreased hip extension range of motion, is it a strength problem? Not likely because the strength is good. It has to be something related to like tightness or something that's restricting the range of motion, not related to strength. Are we all on the same page? Very important piece here. Now it says, which of the following interventions is the most appropriate? See, these are the things that we need to truly understand about the question. Otherwise, we start to get down to the final two and not really know which one to pick. This is something that I help students solve all the time. So go down in the comment box right now. What answer choice do you have? Were you stuck between two? Let me know that as well down in the comment box. So A says single leg bridging. Okay. Well, when I look at the question, I see that this patient lacks hip extension range of motion but we know that it's not due to strength problems. So I'm seeing it probably is something tightness related. So let me put that out to the side so we just keep that in mind. They likely have tightness of their hip flexors, and my big head might be blocking that a little bit, but tightness of the hip flexors. So would single leg bridging improve tightness of the hip flexors? I would say no. That would be the best intervention, the most appropriate to improve tight hip flexors. I should be saying, like, how can we stretch those hip flexors, right? What would be the best intervention to stretch it? Let's take a look at B. B says prone lying positioning. Would that help with tight hip flexors? The answer to that is yeah. Low load, long duration stretch where I'm putting the person prone and they're getting that nice long duration stretch across the hip. Yeah, that would help. I'm going to go ahead and put a check mark next to that for now. Hold on a minute. C says six inch step downs. Would that help with tightness of the hip flexors? I would say mm, no. That would help more of like eccentric control of the quads or something like that. But this person doesn't need that. So I'm going to go ahead and put an X next to C. Let's look, take a look at D. D says anterior stump desensitization, quite a few of you selected this one, but think about it for a moment. All we have in the question is the transfemoral amputation. Nowhere in here does it say anything about the person having pain there. They could, but it doesn't say anything about that. So we would be assuming or adding information in by saying, hey, the stump is painful and the stump is what is actually causing this tightness problem, which is not likely. So I'm going to go ahead and put an X next to D because, again, it is not the most appropriate, the best intervention to address the most likely problem, 
which is tightness of the hip flexors. All right, congratulations to those of you who got the question correct. Final answer is B, prone line positioning. If you struggle with gait questions, if you're someone who gets down to the final two and selects the wrong one, one of my specialties is helping students get down to the right answer repeatedly so they can get a 600 or higher on their MPTE, all right? And I work with them for free until they do, okay? So here's the thing. If you want to get much better at gate intervention, start crushing your exam and getting over a 600 on your MPTE, go into your search bar, type in www.nptegroup.com, become a part of my private free Facebook group, and we're going to help you to start dominating your MPTE. Can't wait to see you in there. Have a good one.